Hello everyone, I'm Eric Schomburg, owner of Schomburg Specialties, the manufacturer of Shopcraft racks. Today I want to speak a few minutes about bakery racks and their types. I'm passionate about bakery racks because we've been making them for almost 30 years and I've had lots of hands-on experience in the construction and design. So, to begin with, I'm going to start with four of the most common types of racks. Conventional, like this rack in the back, nesting, oven, and KD, knockdown, flat pack or bolt together, however you would like to regard them. What I call a conventional bakery rack or, uh, or rack is a rectangular prism consisting of four sides and cross members. The conventional rack or prism is a structure designed to support the baking sheet pan and its contents, and not just one, but most often multiple pans. This structure needs to allow the attachment of wheels or any other options to serve its purpose. The reason I like to speak about conventional racks is they are opposed to nesting type design, in our case, spacecraft. Typically, conventional racks are stronger than nesting racks because of the tie points. And those uh, tie points are, are at this corner here at the bottom at the top, on the sides. Um, on a typical Shopcraft conventional rack like we have here, there's 12 of them. We got one, two, typically two at the top and two at the bottom. Connection points that help hold the rack rigid and support its load both when the rack is stationary and when in movement. On a nesting rack, the, convention, the connection points are reduced to six. Okay, I know you get the idea. A nesting rack is a rectangular prism, just like a conventional rack, but the cross members are placed diagonally across there to allow for the uh, nesting, the one shape to nest into the shape of another. The whole purpose of nesting racks, like spacecraft, is to save space. However, please keep in mind that, the on that only when the nesting rack is free of pans or empty will the nesting feature be available. When the nesting pan, pan rack is loaded with racks, it will not nest. Often nesting racks do not have the integrity or same capacity of a conventional rack resulting in sway when the rack is loaded. What I mean by sway? What I mean by sway is when the rack is pushed at this point here uh, and moved, the uh, top part of the rack begins to tip over. Or, or to move first when the, when the rack is heavily loaded. This sway is the flexing or bending of the structure in this point here. Um, that may be described well as a dancer. Okay? The rack is not intended to flex in this manner, resulting in premature failure of the uh, materials and joining methods. Percentage of nest is another, is another consideration of this design. Nesting is never 100%. So for instance, the typical spacecraft ARSN model nests at about 40%. This means that two racks save about 40% of the same two racks not nested. An oven rack can be either conventional, an oven rack can be either conventional space shopcraft or nesting spacecraft. What differentiates an oven rack is that wheels in the caster brackets are intended to withstand high temperatures of a baking oven. Another difference of an oven rack is often a typical convention, convection rack oven has a lift mechanism inside the baking chamber that couples the rack to the lift. The purpose of this lift mechanism is to raise the rack off the wheels in the baking chamber this allows the rack to revolve by the lift fac facilitating a more consistent product. Not all nesting sp spacecraft racks are compatible with different oven lifts. The oven, the, the, uh, the lift is, is this area here in the rack. KD, knock down, flat pack, or bolt together. These racks are also rectangular prisms 
with the exception that the design allows for the collapsing or flat packing of the major components. There are two benefits of this design. One, it allows the customer or user to assemble the racks, saving the manufacturing cost or of a factory assembled unit. And two, it allows the shipment or transport of a more densely packaged product to save on shipping costs. These two reasons not always, not, are not always benefits, however. Bolt together designs also have a weakness. At each assembly point, you have a mechanical fastener, typically a bolt or a screw. These fastening points can become loose over time, requiring maintenance, retightening. If the uh, fastening points are allowed to remain loose, the rack will become unstable and sway like we spoke about and will prematurely deteriorate. At these points, by holes becoming enlarged, and the base metal become fatigued and cracked. Welded versus knockdown construction. Most bakery rack design would incorporate one or both of these construction methods. The advantage of a fully welded conventional or nesting rack allows the customer to begin using the rack straight away, typically without any additional assembly. Like this rack here would ship just this way, would roll out of the truck and be able to be put straight into service. Racks may be shipped without casters attached, but this would be a decision made between the buyer and the manufacturer. Welded racks also typically have the best longevity with no fasteners to become loose or fail. Welded joints. Knockdown or flat pack racks, as already pointed out, are easier and more cost effective to ship and are less expensive than a welded rack as the customer or user supplies labor to assemble. Materials. Materials of a bakery rack are typically constructed, bakery racks are typically constructed out of stainless steel or of a, or aluminum because of the need for corrosion resistance and sanitation. Aluminum is a good choice because of the high strength to weight ratio of the material and is relatively good uh, corrosion resistance. Aluminum does scratch easily however and sometimes with interaction with other metal parts such as an oven lift heavy scratching can result and sometimes will result in the small flakes coming off the rack that contam can contaminate product. Stainless steel is typically a more expensive product but the material is superior in corrosion resistance and strength. <clears throat> Aluminum has better heat dissipation rate than stainless steel so may produce better results in a cooling or freezing application than stainless steel. Overall, stainless steel is the superior metal of choice in a food production application. Even though the initial costs may be more than that of other metals, the long-term value outweighs the cost. This being said, we, will, we still have many customers that have satisfactory results and are happy with the performance of aluminum constructed bakery racks. Another aspect of the construction of a bakery rack is the use of different shapes of the materials used. What I mean by this is many times hollow shapes or tubing is used in the, con is a, is used in the structural design. Sometimes sanitation requirements require that no hollow shapes tubing be used. It is generally accepted that hollow shape that any hollow shape, no matter how tightly sealed, will eventually develop a crack or an opening, allowing wash water to enter, creating an unsanitary situation. Fasteners used in either welded or bolted together construction are generally uh, steel, uh, zinc-plated steel or stainless steel. Zinc-plated steel will corrode and rust over time, while stainless steel will last indefinitely. Basic rack configuration. What I want to talk about here is the way the pan is actually loaded onto the rack. Pan racks are con configured in several ways. What is meant by this is how the pan is supported. 
and how many pans are on each level. At Schomburg Specialties, if a rack supports one pan per level, this is called a single rack. If a pan supports, if a rack supports two pans per level, this is called a double rack. This is an example of a double rack. So if a, a double rack, 30 pans or 30 pan capacity. Sometimes in smaller bakeries, the use of double racks is prohibitive because of a double rack has the footprint of two single racks. This requires more space to maneuver than the single style rack. Side load, end load. Side load and end load configuration is the way a pan is supported by the rack. Usually on a double rack, the pan is that supports, the, a rack that supports two pans per level. Typically these supports the pan from the short side of the baking pan. However, on a single rack, single rack, side load and end load can make a big difference. On a side load rack, the wide side of the pan is inserted into the rack and is sometimes su and is supported by the short side. At times this con configuration is preferred because of having to navigate a narrow ramp. This means that when the rack is pushed uphill or downhill, the pans are contained by the side panel of the rack. Support of the pan. The pan of a, of a bakery rack is usually supported by the bottom of the pan. This support or angle slide at this point here is just, a, is just large enough to catch the bottom of the pan. When multiple pans are used on a rack or a strap pan is used, the sides need to be wider than, the, than standard. The, the size of your slide needs to be large enough to support the smallest pan when the smallest pan is positioned on the side of the rack. Typically, bakery racks are designed to accommodate usually only one size pan. However, sometimes design can be changed to work with several pans depending on the size. Often the desire is for the rack to accommodate all the pans in the bakery. This can be done, but often requires a grid or permanently, atta permanently attached to the rack uh, to, uh, on a separate grid that fits. In these cases, cost is usually a deciding factor of the racks. With the wire grid shelf can be more expensive. Sometimes if the, if the rack is to accommodate a large number of pans, that can be supported from the lip. In this configuration, pans are spaced closer together than when supported by the bottom on, on the use of a channel or angle that holds two pans per support instead of just one. Another reason for supporting from the lip or rim of the pan is because of the, the container such as a plastic lug or a tote has a tapered shape and the bottom of the container is such that if supported from the bottom would be impractical as the lip or rim of the container is large enough or strong enough to support from. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you much.